We are so thrilled to be partnering with Hinge. Hinge is the dating app designed to be deleted. As you all know, I'm a huge Hinge advocate as I met my partner of almost three years on the app. Even before meeting him, Hinge was always my go-to app because I met more relationship-minded people here and had some great dates. Clearly, I haven't been on the app for a little while, but I re-downloaded it to check out some of the new features. One that stood out to me was the voice prompt, my best friend's take on why you should date me, where your friend can hype you up. Not only does this make the profile creation less daunting, but it's not always easy to see your own green flags. So to test it out, I asked UA some fun prompts to get her take on what I could put if I was dating again. So the first one, how long have we known each other? What was your first impression of me and how has that changed? Julie and I have known each other for almost 10 years. My first impression of Julie was that she's very social, but I've learned that she has a lot more depth to her beyond the social butterfly that she is. My next prompt, what do you think are my green flags? I would say she's deeply loyal. She believes in love, curious mindset, and she is fearlessly ambitious. And then last but not least, what kind of friend am I? Julie is the kind of friend who will always have your back, no matter what. Damn, that feels nice to hear. So download Hinge and try voice prompts today. Then find some one worth deleting the app for. The Dateable Podcast is an insider's look into modern dating that the Huffington Post calls one of the top 10 podcasts about love and sex. On each episode, we'll talk to real daters about everything from sex parties to sex droughts, date fails to diaper fetishes, and first moves to first loves. I'm your host, Yue Xu, former dating coach turned dating sociologist. You'll also hear from my co-host and producer, Julie Kraftchik, as we explore this crazy dateable world. Happy New Year, Datables. Welcome to the first episode of the year of the Datable podcast. We are so happy to be back and we are so excited to kick off the new year with new episodes. But first, we're in the quote unquote off season, which doesn't mean we stop. It just means we're pausing on the guests for a little bit. You get just the two of us, which is enough sometimes, right? Just you and Julie fill up the room, I would say. And then we'll come back with the guests very soon. Yes. And that doesn't mean that we're not hard at work. We are doing a lot of guest interviews for season 16. So look for that Valentine's Day-ish. We're going to be in the off season for a few more weeks. Then we'll resume with brunch talk as well. And so for this episode, we thought, well, for the new year, let's set some in intentions. Julie and I will both share our own intention for the year, and then we'll kind of discuss how you can come upon your own intentions. Every year we feel, you know, everybody feels like in January, they have to come out with their resolutions and with this grand mind, like (laughs) reset. And it doesn't have to be that way. First of the year, the new year is just like a DTR conversation. Does not have to be so (laughs) grand. (laughs) Does not have to change your world. Gradual. Yes. Yeah, let's make it gradual. Let's be patient with ourselves and know that this is just a way to basically set an outline for our year. We know life happens and it doesn't have to follow mm-hmm. everything that we say in January. I love that. I mean, there's a reason why most people actually don't follow through on New Year's resolutions. Mm-hmm. I feel like they're just Sometimes when you take on too much, it's hard to actually have anything get done because it feels so daunting and overwhelming. Yeah. And I also love this mentality of it's kind of like what we say with dating. It's having a vision of what we want, being intentional of this is what I want out of my dating life, but being open to how it manifests and how it actually shows up. And I think this is the same framework of not having these rigid rules or resolutions that we have to follow, but more of this is what my intention is. What were some of your most ridiculous New Year's resolutions from the past? Oh, I mean, it was always like hit the ground running at the gym <laughs> every year. Uh huh. Like everyone. But then I would justify like not doing it in December and be like, well, I'm just going to start in January, <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's another reason. It's like the day is today. Just, you know, you don't have to wait for New Year's. What about you? Do you have anything that was always one of your go-tos? One year, mine was make a million dollars. I had no plan of how I would make a million dollars. I was just like, (laughs) yes, this is the year. I'm going to make seven figures. And I was like an unemployed (laughs) freelancer at the time. Like, yes, I feel it. This is the year. (laughs) So did it happen? (laughs) Let's just say... 
I was, uh, <laughs> let's just say I was two decimals short. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> and then I think I also had a year where I was just like down my luck with dating. And my resolution was this is a year I'm going to state my needs and not settle, you know, just like very <laughs> aggressive and mean about it. Like this is a year, no assholes <laughs> policy. You know, I, okay, it wasn't for New Year's, but I'd always have this thing around my birthday that I wanted mm. a boyfriend before my birthday so I could what? have someone to spend. <laughs> oh yes, God. it was in my head. I'm like, oh. I really want a boyfriend that could come to my birthday celebration. And it was the worst because every year your mm. birthday would be rolling around, mm. no one sight and then it's a reminder and honestly the year I actually like drop this that's when I actually did have a boyfriend for my birthday what a wild train of thought that you think you can <laughs> schedule a boyfriend <laughs> well it was like this arbitrary <laughs> deadline right and I think this is something I struggle with even now which I guess can go to my intention because I'm trying to reframe it mm. into this very rigidness to what is more of how do I want to live my life in this next year? Like, what do I want to bring to my love life? Yeah. And for me, one of the ones I'm thinking of is more trust and trust in my timing, because it's really easy that you have a relationship and you feel like things should move on a certain timeline. And I've definitely fallen very victim to this in the last year. And I want to relinquish some of that control a bit, not to say that I still don't want to have ideas of what I want my life to look like, but I want to feel a little more at ease that things will happen when they're supposed to happen. That's a really good one. So that's your main intention then? Trust in timing? Yeah, that's my intention. Yes. Yeah, I like that. And I think we can use that intention with everything in life. Things happen the way they're supposed to. If you're in the trenches, you're supposed to be in the trenches. There's no easy way out and there are no shortcuts. One thing I've noticed about trusting in timing that has really hit home for me is that you really are where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. There is a reason for that. Yeah. And I used to think I was like so behind all my friends on all these milestones and and I just didn't understand why I was the one getting left behind and I was the one not getting the things that I'm supposed to get. And then now in my 40s, seeing how my life has shaped up, yeah. you know, for me now. Oh, I get it. It was all supposed to happen <laughs> this way. It all makes sense now. Yeah. I mean, it's a throwback to the episode we did last season, right? Of the comparison mm -hmm. game with Drew. And it's so true that we are all on our own path. And I think when you're single, I definitely have had this issue too when I was single. And you think magically when you're in a relationship, a lot of your current issues are going to disappear. And you know, some of them, I'd say they just change mm -hmm. and they show up in different ways. The fundamental way that you're looking at things usually doesn't change. And I think a lot of times we think, oh, like the right partner will change it for me. Mm -hmm. But if that really is our belief and the way that we're going about doing things, you can have a partner that helps guide you and helps support you and helps you you see that there's other ways to look at something. But I think fundamentally, we have to shift our own train of thought. It's about creating the love life that works for you. I'm going to be pretty open about this because I think this is something that was really astounding for me that wrapped up 2022 was you know, my intention for the new year is patience. And that's patience with myself yeah. and patience with my partner. And how I, I arrived at this, and it's a very much related to your intention too, Julie, is my partner and I were having some deep issues for a bit and I couldn't figure out out why. And we talked about couples counseling and even the thought of couples counseling was daunting because I was like, where do we start? Every time we would mm -hmm. have the same issues, we would talk in circles. And I'll be very honest, our issues were there was a point where when we first started dating, he was like, I'm really not looking to get married again. OK, that was like pretty much off mm -hmm. the table. And then very like towards the middle of last year, he came back and was like, you made me believe in love again. I am ready to get married. Let's look at rings and do this. And then he changed his mind. When he changed his mind, it like set me down this hellhole. I was like, <sighs> yeah. am I not worthy of love? Am I again yeah. getting left behind? Am I just a fool here? 
getting strong along. But when we talked this out, because I was like, if we go to therapy, what do we talk? Where do we even start? Because then it's like, right. I started pulling away and he's like, now I'm feeling insecure in this relationship and it makes me want to not commit as much so that mm. you see like we're feeding each other's triggers. Yes. Yes. Right. And then it's like, how do you get out of this <laughs> fucking hamster wheel of things that really bothered us. But when we hashed this out, Julie, and we just had some of the best conversations ever where hurtful things were said, but we came out of it on the other side because I realized something. It was never about marriage or the ring because I watch shows like Love is Blind and I watch like Say Yes to the Dress <laughs> and shit like that doesn't give me anything. It doesn't do anything to me. I was like, yeah, am I just a girl that wants to get married and I'm just playing it cool? I'm actually not. I don't want a wedding. I don't want marriage. I don't need the piece of paper. I don't need the ring. I actually need the safety from my partner yeah. and I need him to express it in a way that's more than just every day I love you. Mm, I needed more yes, of a that. gesture. That's what I needed. So here's our where we netted. We're still going to couples counseling. I still think that's very much necessary. Mm -hmm. Now I know I need to work on how to be more secure in my relationship, right? So I know what I'm working on. He knows what he's working on. But for us to really move forward is to create, and we've talked about this before, is like a commitment ceremony. We're going to do it. Mm -hmm. We're going to write our vows. We're going to make this a very intimate thing, just the two of us, and make it a ceremony. I think that's what I really need. It's like this, yeah, you know, to yeah. make this official, like we are officially committed to each other for as long as we possibly can. Yeah. I mean, I think that's really revolutionary <laughs> that you were able to untangle what it was that was at the core of it. And it totally plays into the timing because that's where a lot of my stuff is coming from, too. Mm -hmm. Right. It's this mm -hmm. pressure to do all these things. And especially when you want to have children or if that's a factor, that's another pressure cooker. So all this stuff ties together. But at the end of the day, like, what is it that you really want? I'm going to give another throwback to an episode last season that has sat with me that we did with Kim, mm. that she had such a revolutionary way of thinking about dating of just I want to be there for this person and they want to be there for me. Yeah. And what that looks like, we decide. But as long as my needs are getting met, I feel supported. Yes. I feel loved. Fuck everything else. And, you know, I have like this ego too at that, like, oh, well, if they're not ready to fully commit, then yes. do I want to keep this? Like, is am I being stupid? You know, it's like all these things that we've been told and I blame the rules, <laughs> fucking rules mm -hmm. has ruined women because I think this is very common for women and men. I don't want to even say just women, but everyone, especially hetero women, though, we've been taught this forever. And it's really unraveling a lot of this that's important. And what is it that's going to make you happy ultimately? It's a fucking rom-coms too, Julie. And I think about this all the time. What ruined me is I used to think, okay, the guy that wants to be with me is the one that's like, I want to be with you and I want to get married to you and you're the love of my life and I want to profess my love to you. You're it. And I used to think, well, if my partner doesn't do those things or say those things, if my partner doesn't want to get married to me, does that mean he doesn't love me? Right. I used to equate right. those things. And they're not the same. And for me, being in a relationship with someone who was married before, I had so many years of just comparing myself to this previous relationship. Well, he was willing to do it for her. He was willing to yeah. do all that for her. Why can't he do that for me? But it's not about that. I think even when you mentioned the Kim episode, it's so true. It's like intentional coupling. It's so much easier said than done. But it's about mm -hmm. how you choose each other and not about what you do. It's how you go about mm -hmm. doing it. And I'm so glad that I can get to the bottom of what my needs are in order for that yeah. to happen. Because sometimes we get our needs mixed up with what we think we need. Oof, that's on a whole other level. Let's hold that thought for a quick message. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. When was the last time you felt like your best self? I can tell you for me, it's when I feel like I'm in control of my life and my actions. But sometimes life gets me bogged down. I feel overwhelmed and I can't show up in the way that I want. Working with a therapist has helped me tremendously in taking control of my life and getting me closer to the best version of myself. I meet with my therapist on a weekly basis and I feel so empowered after each session. I used to think therapy was for when times are bad, but I realize it's very similar to healthy eating. Therapy helps to maintain my mental health and is a way of life. If 
you're thinking about giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash dateable today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, that's spelled H-E-L-P dot com slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E. This episode is sponsored by Vaya. We all know there are things that can help set the mood in the bedroom, but did you know a little THC could also do that? Yes, Vaya has developed a unique blend of pleasure-enhancing cannabinoids, libido-strengthening herbs, and a low dose of THC all into one mind-blowing gummy called High Love. This gummy, wow, it will awaken your senses, increase blood flow, and intensify any sexual experience. I've been pleasantly surprised by the High Love gummies because it is just the right amount of THC THC for me to have a good time without feeling sleepy. And hey, if THC is not your thing, Via also offers a wide array of other gummies without it. And everything legally ships in 50 states with discreet packaging directly to your door. So if you're over 21, you can get 15% off and a free pack of award-winning Dreams THC plus CBN sleep gummies with our exclusive code DATEABLE at ViaHemp.com. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Let the gummies work their magic. Head to viahemp.com and use a code DATEABLE to receive 15% off and one free sample of their sleepy dream gummies. That's viahemp.com and use a code D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E at checkout. Take your passion and pleasure to a whole new level with high love from Via Hemp. Living with ADHD can be a challenge and dating with ADHD is definitely a challenge, we've heard many of you say, but finding the right care and proper tools needed to succeed can be life-changing. Done is an online ADHD care platform that can get you all the resources you need to help manage your ADHD. Online visits, refills, and a 24-7 care team made for you. In just one minute, Done's online assessment can help kickstart your ADHD treatment journey. With experienced clinicians, worry-fill refills, and online visits, you can start getting personalized care as soon as today or tomorrow. So contact an expert team that can help you around the clock and get a personalized treatment plan just for you. Here's how you do it. Take a free one-minute assessment and book an appointment with a licensed ADHD clinician as soon as the next day. Get continuous care, one-click refills, insurance coverage, and 24-7 care team support with Done for just $79 a month. And pharmacy co-pays as low as $0. Visit get.donefirst.com slash podcast to learn more. That's get.donefirst.com slash podcast to learn more. Done. Turn ADHD into your strength. As you know, I recently left my corporate job and I've been in total recovery mode all about self-care. One of my new routines is the nighttime shower before bed. There's just something about washing away the day and that reflection that's been super helpful for me. I've been using one of our partners, Osea's Mega Moisture Duo. This combo body oil and body lotion are so freaking incredible. It literally feels like I'm at a spa. I realize that the secret is seaweed and other skin level ingredients ingredients that are normally reserved for face products. And that's why I was so excited when Osea became one of our partners. And, you know, we're so grateful for partners like this because one, they keep the show going, but they're also super good for all of our listeners and for our own well-being. So if you want to have that nighttime bliss like I am doing, you can get 10% off your first order site-wide with code DATEABLE at OseaMalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order and free shipping on order over $60. So head to oseamalibu.com and use the code DATEABLE for 10% off. Let us know which products you end up going with. Share them in social. Super excited to see what you end up choosing. For anyone out there, it's really what works for you. If you're saying my intention is to start a family, then you do that. It's all going to be customizable depending on where you are. And maybe if this was a situation for other people, they would say, I'm actually going to leave this relationship and find someone that's on the same page as me. And that's totally viable too. I think every choice you do is viable. You just have to decide what is it that you need? What is it that you want? What is it that's going to make you happy? Again, 
understand is how do you put your needs ahead? And not to say that you can't listen to your partner's needs, absolutely. But how do you get to this place of understanding is so important too. So our intentions are very much related. (laughs) Trust in the timing and just being patient. There is no need to rush through life. Life is already so short and we miss so many moments. The rushing to the future really robs us of our current happiness. And we just have to get that happiness back. Be patient. Yeah. You know what, though? Even if you're single, I can see these intentions totally carrying over also. Mm -hmm. Patience, that was a really big one that I'm still working on my patience. Mm -hmm. You could ask my partner. It's not one of my high, like you may know (laughs) too. It's definitely not one of my stronger suits and I'm working on it. So there's that. But I do think I actually did have patience dating at the end that I was able to say, okay, I know this person's coming. This one didn't work out, but the next person could. And having that attitude does show patience. So often we expect everything to happen overnight. Yes. Even just patience and letting something develop, right? We expect on date one that it's chemistry and fireworks and we'll know if we found the person. Sometimes patience is just, you know, you had a good time, let's go on another date and see what happens. So patience can really show up in so many ways. And I actually think patience is actually a big theme for this entire year for everyone mm. because we've been just so go, 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 it feels like. And I I don't know about you, UA, but I'm like getting kind of some of this, like I know we're technically not out of the pandemic, but for all intents and purposes, yeah. I guess people will say we are. I don't even know anymore. I don't know. But I feel like this backlash of the pandemic has been really difficult for me, even more than the actual pandemic somehow. I don't even know. Mm. But I think it's this feeling that everything is going to go back to normal. And it's going to be what we picked off in 2019, like pick that up again. I don't know about you, but I feel like in the cities and stuff, like we're facing major crime Mm -hmm. waves and just income inequality and we're heading into a recession. And there's just, I don't want to be all doom and gloom, but like there's a lot happening and it is going to be patience that we're going to get out of it. With every like bus, there's a boom. So how do we work through whatever is going on and just slow down? Down to. I feel like in the last couple years, we've been so technology obsessed that we just think everything can happen instantaneously. I think what we're learning is that it just doesn't work that way Mm -hmm. and we need to slow it down a bit. I have a quote that I have written everywhere in my house and it's, it will pass. It will pass. Yeah. This phrase means so much to me because when you are in the trenches, you're in this downward spiral, things are not going your way. You can say it will pass, right? This will pass. But the same applies to when things are good too. I think this is what grounds me is like, even when things are good and you're like, yay, things are going, I'm so happy. And the things that are going, this also will pass. And it just shows that we can't stay stagnant. You can't be complacent. So you have to just keep chugging forward and working on the things that matter to you because the highs and the lows, they all pass. That's the thing. You know, nothing is permanent. But going back to even what you were saying a little bit earlier, Julie, with the patients, on one hand, it is like trying to meet these milestones and go, go, go. On the other hand, I think patience also comes from trust. Sometimes Mm -hmm. we're impatient with people and life is because we're not trusting them to fulfill the promises or whatever we think the promises that they made out for us. So then we get impatient because we're like, well, dumb example, but they said they were going to wash the dishes, but it's 3 p.m. and the dishes are washed and I can't trust them. Yeah. Some of the patience has to do with letting go and trusting people and trusting things, trusting the universe and saying it will happen. Just let it happen on its own time. It does not have to be on your own timeline. Yeah. I mean, I think that's exactly what I'm going through with my partner too. It's like we're realizing that we both come into this relationship with totally different past experiences, Mm -hmm. different ways of processing information, and different times of adapting to change. I think that's been a big learning. And that happens in every relationship because it's two different people coming together and trusting that because maybe there's some areas that I want things to be done quicker than him and other areas that he does a different way than I do. It doesn't mean that it won't happen for us. It just might, you know, might zigzag 
zigzag a little till it gets to that point instead of maybe a straight line or something. So I do think the trust and the timing does go hand in hand with patience, because if you can have that faith, and I think you ultimately know in your gut, like, is this something worth preserving? Is this something that I want to be part of? Or, you know, even in early dating, I get trust in the timing or patience definitely came into account when you were waiting for that next date or you're waiting for that person to text you. All this stuff really applies through the whole spectrum of dating and relationships. But you know in your gut, like, is this person going to follow through or not? I think you really do. And, you know, of course, there's going to be some instances where you're blindsided. Things don't work the way they do. Absolutely. We're not going to say that never happens because it does. And the work is to pick yourself back up. But a lot of times, at least for me, I know when I did get ghosted or when something didn't work out, there was a feeling all along. I just kind of chose to ignore it. Exactly. Embrace the zigzag. I like that you described it that way. It's very a visual way of representing real life. Nothing Mm -hmm. works in a linear way. We only see the linear on people's social media because that's what they post is the (laughs) linear progression. But everyone's life is zigzagged. So embrace the zigzag. That's normal. That's a good thing. Maybe that's the intention of 2023 for everyone. No matter what stage they're at is embrace the zigzag. I love that. I think that's that's a really good one for us all to walk away with because nothing is ever easy. But I love the statement. We've said it a few times on this podcast. Podcast. And I actually think it was Jason, when our single dad episode where we talked about this is choose your heart. Mm. Everything is going to be hard. It's hard to be single. It's hard to be in relationships. It's hard to be dating. All of it's hard <laughs> in different ways, but all of it's really great in different ways too. So yes, there might be some periods that feel really freaking hard, but you'll get through it. And I think sometimes the hard times do bring you closer to, to what it is you ultimately want. And you'll appreciate it more. I love that. That was a lot, a lot to take in, but I think this will be really good for people to hear. And we look forward to hearing how people are embracing their own zigzags. So follow us on social media, tag us in a photo if you want to share your zigzags and where you're going in 2023. We're here to support you. We love supporting you on your dating journey. That's why we do what we do. So yeah, let's see what happens in 2023. Trust in the timing patience embraces zigzags tag us on social media you can find us on instagram at dateable podcast you can dm us there too maybe show us a visual representation of your zigzags that'd be kind of fun right (laughs) we can see what kind of shapes that we've all made in our lives and we're also going to bring back brunch talk very soon so get those questions in you can email us hello at datablepodcast.com or you can dm us on social media at dateable podcast with your burning dating questions Well, that being said, we're going to wrap up this episode. Stay Dateable! The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. Want to continue the conversation? First, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter with the handle at Dateable Podcast. Tag us in any post with the hashtag Stay Dateable and trust us, we look at all of those posts. Then head over to our website, datablepodcast.com. There you'll find all the episodes as well as articles, videos, and our coaching service with vetted industry experts. You can also find our premium Y series where we dissect, analyze, and offer solutions to some of the most common dating conundrums. We're also downloadable for free on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Overcast, Stitcher Radio, and other podcast platforms. Your feedback is valuable to us, so don't forget to leave us a review. And most importantly, remember to stay dateable.